sketch the vector field, f of x, y equal to y over square root of x squared plus y squared, comma, minus x over square root of x squared plus y squared at the following four points. So we'll have 0, 1, 4, comma, 3, minus 3, 0, and minus 3, 4. So we're going to take these, stick them into our function. What comes out are going to be these four vectors here. So we're going to want to plot these. So the idea is going to be, I look up our point, say 0, 1. I'm going to draw off of it the vector 1, comma, 0. So 0, 1, go over 0, up 1 gives me this point. Then the vector we're interested in is 1, 0, which is go over 1, up 0. So I'll take this vector at the origin and just slide it up to our point. So that's what the vector field's telling you. You're going to have point goes in, vector comes out. The graph is going to look like take your point and then draw that vector off of it. So for next one, so we have point is 4, 3. Vector is 3 fifths minus 4 fifths. So I'm going to go over 4, up 3. And then the vector is 3 fifths, goes off to about there, and then minus 4 fifths. So we're looking at a vector like this. And I just slide it over. OK, so then for C and D, it's the same idea. So let's take a look at some things about our vector field here. First thing you'll note, if you take a look at all four of these, the length is always going to be equal to 1. So these are always going to be unit vectors. Okay, that's not a surprise. If you look at your function, you take the square of each and add them together, you're going to wind up with y squared plus x squared over x squared plus y squared. That's going to give us a 1 no matter what you put in for x and y. So always unit vectors. Next, what else do we have? How about if we switch to polar coordinates just to get a better idea of how things actually look? So we're going to put in x. It's going to become our cosine theta. y is going to become our sine theta. So what are we going to get? Well, we had a y over x squared plus y squared square root. So our denominators are both going to go to r. Then y goes to r sine theta. x goes to r cosine theta. So I wind up with sine theta, comma, minus cosine theta. OK, again, that confirms these are all unit vectors. You sum the squares there. Cosine squared plus sine squared gives me 1. Now, what else do I get from this? OK, first off, there's no r in here. So you'll note our vector is only going to depend on the angle that you're at. So what does that mean? If you look at picture 1, that's going to mean I fix an angle. I draw the ray coming off of it. Once I know what one vector looks like, I get all the rest just by sliding up the ray. So these are all going to be the same. Then you take the dot product of your vector with the point that you're sticking in. They're going to be perpendicular. You're always going to get 0 to come out. So that's going to look something like, OK, here, you put your point in x, y. What comes out? from your vector field is going to be length 1, and it's going to be perpendicular. So when it comes out, it'll be right here. Then you do your dot product, you're always going to get 0. OK, note xy is always going to be r cosine theta, r sine theta. So this works out mechanically. You take your dot product, r cosine theta with sine theta, and then r sine theta with minus cosine theta. Add them together, you get 0. OK, then the third one is going to travel clockwise. So if I draw in a few circles and then put our vectors on at a bunch of points around a given circle, you'll notice it's looking like this here, sort of like a pinwheel. So our vectors are traveling clockwise. That makes sense. If you take a look at what's happening here, you would want cosine theta, sine theta. That would make you travel counterclockwise like we normally do when we measure angles. So this is the way you make it go in the other direction.